morning everyone um, after much much difficulty with this video <laughs> first it was technical issues and then yesterday was just rain we had like three inches of rain yesterday um, so dark cloudy day and my entire light goes out in my studio in the middle of recording this video. So hopefully today will get us through this. We're going to um, create this today. This is um, this is what I'm going to be doing on my class on the first and I thought today would be fun to share this with y'all and um, we're gonna do this work this out um, okay this is striping this is sand swirl this one is diva dance and this one is roller coaster so I will list all those for you those are all found in tangle patterns um, and I'll put that link on my video uh, today I'm using the artist tiles by Strathmore $7.99 on Amazon, 70 tiles. Um, it is artist paper, it is drawing paper. Um, so there is no thickness to this, but this paper is excellent for shading. So um, order some. They also come in watercolors, uh, they come in black tiles, um, and Bristol paper. So, and I think they're like from $7.99 to $9.99 in that area. Not all of them have 70 tiles. Um, this is the one I use when I'm sitting and watching TV and doodling. So, and I use it for my art classes. Let's see. I can find a blank page here. Okay, we're gonna use a pencil and a blending stump. This one can be sharpened on um, sandpaper, so you can get rid of that black as you use it, and you don't have to keep buying new ones. It's very, it's very hard. Um, they work really well. They have really fine points. I personally like the number one. I don't have one of those with me. It is half the size, smaller. So you can get in those really fine little pointed areas. I am using my Graphics Gear 500 um, pencil. This one has the very soft lead. It's an 09. Um, you can get these on Amazon. I will put the link for that. And I am using my Unipen Fine Line. Um, I love these pens. I really like these more than the um, microns. I use these in my drawings with um, my alcohol markers. I have used these with my watercolor. I use them on top of my watercolor. You can use them on top of your colored pencils, um, Prismacolor and Artesia. They work best if you take a paper towel after you color and gently wipe the area where the color is that you want to go over. Don't go like this or your pencil will go everywhere. But if you have like a circle and you colored it and it's got that waxy film on it, just take a piece of take a piece of paper towel and wrap it around your finger and just kind of go like that. And it will pick up some of that waxy residue and then you can use these right over the top of it. At the moment I only have a one and a five. Um, I'm going to use the five today. I don't normally use it to do these drawings. I normally do a one because I like the fine line. But for this video, I'm going to use a five because it shows up better. Sorry, coffee time. Um, I just did order a set. Um, they start at 0 0.05. And then they have a one, a two, a three, a five and an eight. So that's an excellent set for the little fine lines and my number one is worn out so 
it was eleven ninety nine, and I'll put that link on there too. Um, we're also going to use a compass because let's face it, big circles are hard to draw straight, and you have this tool, so why not use it? And then you don't have to stress it. Um, I'm going to measure my other circle. Also, um, I'm going to reach through here again. We're going to use our Signo Uniball white. Um, just a little dot and some lines with this, but it does work really well. So I'll put the link to that also. So this is for this paper. You can do this on any piece of paper, any size you want. I have this at um, about um, two and three quarters for this. So here, I'll show you that. Um, you can just put this on your ruler, put your pen right at the end, and the circumference of your circle it will be a two and three fourths circumference and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this I can actually see where I did that other one now when I'm doing this on this kind of paper I don't push that in because I don't want that hole in first of all I don't want it in this piece of paper and I don't want it to go through three or four more pieces of paper so I just stand it there and very lightly make my circle Um, if you hold this down just a little bit and not on the handle, you can get it to make a little bit darker circle. So now we're going to come in just a little bit. So we brought it in about half an inch. Now just find your hole. It makes a little makes a nice little dent so you can keep finding it and you're just going to make another circle right inside of that one now when I'm doing circles like this I do the circle with the compass but then I go back over and freehand it with this so that you get um you get a circle that looks like you didn't, maybe, might not have really used a compass, which really it doesn't matter if you want to use the compass or not. Anyway, um, so now to make this flower, this is just circles that go like this, and I will show you how to do that. So to make your first line, you're going to take the pencil part. Of your compass and put it in the dot in the middle and then just put it someplace on this put the point someplace on this line and you're gonna bring it over and you're gonna make a half a circle in there just like that now for your next one you're gonna put the point on that end of your and you can do that on this end or this end. It doesn't matter which one. But you're going to put it right on the end and make another circle. Just like this. And you just keep doing that until you have that flower. Now, see this one's going to make this leaf over here for this petal. And now we'll just keep making that. Make sure you center it on your line because, oops, you don't want it to, you don't want it to overlap in the middle. You don't want to get one line into one of these petals. Now 
and there's your flower. Okay, so now you have a nice even circle, you have nice even flowers, you have nice even triangle shapes. And for me, that's Zen. So if you're a freehander and you insist that you be a freehander, that is fantastic. Um, I admire you for being able to make that circle freehand. I cannot. Um, so now we are going to just, my pen doesn't want to, okay. We're just going to follow those lines we just made and outline this flower. And I just told you how fantastic this pen is, and it doesn't want to write. But it did do some heavy duty um, drawing over the top of watercolor the other day, so the nib probably isn't cleaned out. And you can go ahead and do your outline your circles here. Now, you can buy um, you can buy a compass. They do make compasses that will hold one of these pins. Um, I bought one that I thought was going to work, but the pins are too wide for the opening. So, if you buy one, buy one that comes with a pin, or make sure that little opening that holds the pin is big enough to hold your pen. And then you don't have to do all these steps because it's drawn already in ink. Um, for me, I really like these steps, so I don't mind doing all this tracing. Um, usually in the background there's some really soft music playing, and I kind of draw this lines to the music so I go really nice and slow and take my time so that it's nice and neat except for over here where the pen didn't cooperate um, now to do this inside circle and get it fairly straight do it in short sections but just do it between your flowers like this and that's way off the line, but that's okay. You'll never notice in the end product. <clears throat> and I always keep a scrap piece of paper next to me. Um, drawings that I mess up or when I'm cutting watercolor paper I, I cut a few extra for, to have next to me so that if your tip of your pen gets clogged up or you're using markers and you need to make a test of the marker color before you um, actually put it on your paper it's good to have a piece of scrap paper that's the same as the paper that you're using because sometimes our markers make different slightly different ink colors on different types of paper. So if you notice what I did, I get my paper where it's comfortable and then I bring my hand around until I can't move my hand anymore. And then I stop there and turn the paper. And that usually gets me pretty far in the circle. Just do it until it's uncomfortable for your hand. And then stop. You don't want to stress your wrist or anything. Oops. So now, if you do it in little sections like that, 
you get much straighter lines when you go around the outside circle. Okay, so now you want this to look like it's rounded and sitting above everything else. So you want to make sure that all of your lines go the same direction. And you want them to be rounded. So we're going to start down here and make a round circle. And I do all of these first. Now this will be where we use the uh, white. This is where we're going to use the white pen. I do not know why my pen is acting up today. This one doesn't normally do that. I guess I got all the bugs worked out in the technical stuff, so now it's going to be my supplies here. So this is technically your first black stripe. And I like to do this because this angle is what I'm going to do all the rest of the stripes in. So it's kind of a, a guide to get you going on your stripes. So now we're going to come back in and um, add our white at the end. And you can see right here, somehow I got this line just a little tiny bit off. But it's okay because I'm probably the only one that notices that. So now we're going to make stripes in here. So you're going to make you a nice round stripes. Okay, now we did 10, we did 10 lines, so you want to do 10 lines in each petal. And when you're doing them, you kind of want to eyeball, look over here when you're ready to make the line, and eyeball it so that they kind of line up and you have it all even. So the first one's easy, and the second one's not too bad, but you can kind of just... When you set this pin down, kind of get it lined up with that and make your make your stripes. Oh, that was a big one. And when you do that, that makes all of your stripes appear even on here. really like doing this flower. This is one of my favorite centers to do. Um, there's so many options you can do. You can do this and then your borders just um, go on go on your Pinterest, go on uh, Google or go on YouTube and look up Zentangle borders and you will have endless amounts of ideas that you can put around this you do not have to strictly stick to the roller coaster. Um, and if you want to go to tanglepatterns.com and just scroll through by alphabet, there are um, so many in there that you can use as you can use as borders. Sorry, I felt like I was off right there. Um, I know Maria has several videos on borders, 
And then in this part, you can do anything. If you wanted a really cool look on this one, you can do striping here, come in this way and round it. And then it would look like it's tucked in behind these petals and, and it would look like it's coming out right here and these would look like they're coming out. And that would make a really, really cool. And you could even do this in a striping like you're doing this and have a very 3D picture. Last one. Now you have your stripes done, now you're going to color them in. Now in this step, I did sparkle on mine, but you could color these all in black and then use your chalk pencil and go back over it and make your highlights. So that's a however you want to do it thing. So the, this is your first black stripe, then this one's going to be white, so your next one's going to be black. So we're going to, I know there's very technical ways to do all this, but um, I usually find an easy way to do it and then do it my way. So I like to scribble in my little sparkle first and then just quickly color in behind it. And I always tell my classes, it's like a heartbeat line. So you don't want it to be, you don't really want it to be that straight. You kind of want it to be a little messy like that. Because that's how a sparkle would be on a, that's how the highlight would be. And you want this in the middle because you're going to shade these edges to give it that rounded appearance. And you want all of your sparkles to line up, so be sure that you line all those up as you're going down and they don't have to be perfect because this sparkle is um, it's a shimmer of light that's reflecting off of your piece so it's not going to be totally absolutely in in its natural setting it wouldn't be exactly straight so don't get hung up on making everything absolutely perfect because if you think about it in its natural setting it's not going to be super perfect. Got to have some coffee. I had doctor's appointments two days in a row and both of them wouldn't allow me to have my coffee first thing in the morning. And anybody that knows me knows that... Is not a good thing. So now we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. Um, I was going to make this pre make this in steps so that I could just swap out the paper and we could go a little faster and not have such long videos. But with all the disasters that have happened over the last couple of days, just going to go ahead and do it. This, you guys may not believe this, but this is, striping is a hard 
Um, this is a hard one for me, and one that is checkered that I am coloring in because I have some short-term memory issues. <laughs> and for some reason, my brain cannot do these patterns. <laughs> so... Believe it or not, actually, the checkered ones, when I have to color a checkered pattern, you can pretty much count on it being messed up somewhere in there. But these pins, these, your Uniball Whites, <laughs> um, if you do this and you accidentally color the wrong one, don't freak out. Just let it completely dry and keep going. And then after it's totally dry, you can go back over it with that pen. And it'll be like, um, uh, what is it called? White out. Which I suppose you could also use. Um, I have one of these erasers. So this side is a really good firm eraser. This is a sanded, it's called a sanded eraser. Um, this side is heavily sanded, and this side is really lightly sanded. Now, if you go at this paper really hard, you're going to really tear it up. But, if you make a pin mark on a paper and you use the sanded eraser, it will take it back off. So, that is a little, um, a little cheat that you can do. But you do have to be very careful, and you really do on watercolor paper, because your watercolor paper is... Um, wet and if you go at it it's really going to eat up the paper but if you're painting this in watercolor and you accidentally go out of the edge you can clean that watercolor up with the sand eraser too so I'll see if I can find one on Amazon and put a link in there for you they probably aren't very much um, I'm pretty sure I got that one at an art supply store It's a great little tool to keep next to you. I also buy, um, my favorite eraser is a kneaded eraser. It's, so, you can erase with this and get it all dirty. You can erase, use it on top of watercolor marker, whatever. And then you can clean it up like this. And then you can still use it. And if you... You have a you have a pencil mark. Um, you don't have to go like this for this one. You can just tap it on there, and it will pick up your pencil. So it's one that won't tear up your paper. Um, this one is a Prismacolor one, and I got it at, at an art supply store. And you have to really, when you buy it, really give it a squeeze like this because I bought. Four of these and I got them home and two of them were so hard I couldn't even use them so you want to make sure that uh, it's nice and soft I've had this one for about um, I've probably had this one sitting aside for about six months because you really you can really really use these for a long long time and if you're erasing something really really fine you can you can shape it and get in there with the really fine things. So I'll put a link to that too, because those are good erasers to use. I use those a lot when I finish up. When I do one of these and I have pencil in the background, I use that a lot because you can do all this coloring in and then if you see a little bit of, of pencil that's bothering you or you think that that pencil might affect your shading, you can go back in with that kneaded eraser and just dot it on the pencil and it won't mess up your pen and everything.
So it has decided to, um, when I sat down here, the beautiful sunshine was shining through my window and here I was thinking we were going to have a really great day and now it is windy, windy, and all the black clouds have rolled back in. I think before the weekend is over, we're supposed to have between three and six inches of rain. So we have flood warnings and it's just a rainy, rainy day, but I love those rainy days this time of year because in the fall, when I clean out my flower beds, I have a lot of zinnias and I have cosmos, cosmos, oh, beautiful, beautiful cosmos, my favorite, favorite garden flower. Um, I love to photograph them, but in the fall when I clean all that down, I cut them and then shake the seeds it back into my flower beds so then they sit all winter and then in the spring they start coming back up and then you don't have to keep buying seeds every year and you have a beautiful wildflower look so I have a purple coneflower and I have rutabecchia which is a black eyed susans and I have zinnias and I have hollyhocks and I have cosmos and morning glories. I have a fancy pink morning glory that is layers and layers and then it has little hairy. It would make actually a really good zentangle. Maybe I'll have to look at that this summer. It has little hairy things that come in out of it in white. Oh, it's really pretty. I might, um, I am a gardener at heart, so all the flower pictures I do are because I just love them. I did years and years of flower work, flower, flower shops, I was a florist um, for 15 years, so you get to see all of the flowers up close and get a good look at them. And then I was um, in landscaping for six years. And that's a whole different monster. Boy, that's some hard, hard work. Um, and then I was a landscape designer. So I got to not be working so hard, but I still got to be in the flower beds and design them for other people. And I also spent... Um, four years in a greenhouse so really I've had all experience with all directions of the floral industry and when you do that you really get to see them up close and study them and I am um, photography is my other hobby so a lot of my photography is flowers, and a lot of my artwork is flowers. I'm glad I'm getting some new pins. I think I've worn this little dude out. I have gotten off somehow here. I have one extra. Or not enough. I got one too many in there. And I don't want a black tip there. So we're just going to make a... We're going to make a thin line here. And there you go. You fixed the problem. And you really can't tell by looking at it. This one even looks like it may have not enough. So there again, striping patterns give me a hard time. Okay, so um, we're going to do sand swirl, which is this pattern right here. Um, we're going to do it every other one. And 
If you are somebody that needs to draw that out first, by all means, draw it out first and you can do this step in pencil. So you're going to start right on here because you want it to come out of there and then come up. And I like to make that a circle instead of a longer one because I like it to be more um, tucked under there. Uh, instead of it looking like fescue where you do it long, I like to make it round. And now you're just going to start coming around. And you can do these really tight together, which I probably would do more so if I had a smaller pen. Um, or you can do them nice and loose like this. It doesn't matter. It's your art. And you want to do this slowly so you get a nice clean line. And you want to continue doing this. Now see, this is touching right here. So over here, we're going to just start making lines like this. And you want to be real careful to stay inside your black line, but you want your black lines to connect to your outside line. And now over here, you want to do the same thing because you want it to look like that it's tucked underneath here. And then when you shade all of this, it'll look like it's tucked under and this part's sticking up. And then this one, you can do the same thing. And you want to get down in there. Be real careful. Okay. So that's your sand swirl. And we're going to do that two more times. Bring it straight up out of there and make a circle. And then come around. And if you go to tanglepatterns.com, um, you can find the step outs for sand swirl on there. It is so windy out there. I guess we had a moment of calm this morning. Um, I see that the sunshine is peeking back through every now and then. Okay, so that, so you want to keep that line because you want to bring it around here. But this is too wide. So lift your pencil off of that and bring it so that it's where it would have been had you just kept drawing the line and then continue. And then you can come back up here and just kind of touch that up. Now here you're just going to... Oh, there's our sunshine. And here... This is my favorite, favorite spot in the morning when the sun's out to sit here and do my drawing with my cup of coffee in the sunshine. A few years ago, I bought a little pine tree that was on clearance at one of our stores and had it on my porch for Christmas time. And then when Christmas time was over, I planted it in my yard right outside my studio window here so I can sit here and watch it grow but at some point in the future that's gonna block out all that Sun and I did not think that through very well really what I thought I would do was have a nice tree there that I could put some bird feeders out there and watch the birds so at some point my 
sunshine will probably be traded for bird feeders. Isn't that beautiful when the sun hits it? So you still have room here to come around another time. So pick up this. This would be your next one. So pick this up and come around and put your pin down where you want the... And that makes your next line be in line with this one. Now, there's not enough room here, so you can just start doing this. And for all of you who are just beginning this art form, there is not really supposed to be precision in this. Um, you can do it neatly, but it doesn't have, absolutely have to be absolutely perfect. So that's the great thing about this art form. You do not have to be perfect in it. You can do it however it suits you. Um, so this is Diva Dance. And Diva Dance is this one. So there's two different Diva Dance. This is just regular Diva Dance. And you could do this just by itself on a piece of paper. And then there's also Diva Dance Rock and Roll that makes a rose pattern when you do it. So for this one, you make a little circle. And then for um, two or three circles, you want to... Go around it. So I like to do two and then we'll add in the black on the next one around. Now when you come around this is a cool one on this second ring to put a little bit of make it not even. You want it to have some dips in it because you're gonna follow that dip every time you come around you're gonna go into that dip and make it look like this and then when you go back in and shade it then you have all of these ridges in there so each time you come around you want to kind of mimic that so we're going to make a circle all the way around and then we're going to add this because our next string that comes around This is a big space in here. So now come around and make that little dip right there. And I did one right here, so make that one. And then go back up over this like that. And you want to do that a couple more, another one. And now you want to add, let's add one over here. This one can be kind of a long one. So that when you get done with this, that looks like your string separated there. Like this is a string and it's separated away and you're sand down in a hole. And we need some on this side and there is no set amount I couldn't tell you how many I did on each one I just put them where it feels like they ought to be so we're gonna come off of that and go here now lift up your pin and bring it around and put it back down I think I want one here So now you're where you can do your lines this way and you you can add in like here we can make another line and then add in another little um, hole right here and near here you can make a couple of lines and then add a hole right there make it long 
squeezed in here and squeezed all those. Squeezed all your lines apart there. And you can do this on whatever pattern you want those little holes in there. So you can see all the little waves and now it gives you that optical illusion. And now when we shade, we're going to shade in those little, those little grooves right there and it'll turn it into a really 3D effect. So you really kind of want to keep your lines the same space apart, but these circles do not in any way, shape, or form have to be nice and neat. You want them to be kind of wavy. Start back here with this one so I can see where he's supposed to go over here. There. Now just fill in those little spots. This one, you can keep it kind of wavy, and you could even come out right here and make it look like that really makes you have the illusion that it's all under there. Where do I want more? Boy, my pen just doesn't want to cooperate. So there was some confusion the other day about step outs. Um, a step out is what the person who invented, originally invented each Zentangle design. They make a step out of how they got to that design and those are for you to use to show you each step of the process of how to make that design. Now, if you go and find a design that you like and you draw it, you are not, you do not have to do the step out for it. Um, when I'm doing my class for this, I will do my, I will draw my own step outs and that's just because I want them on a big piece of paper so that I can make copies of it and each person in the class can take home the step outs so that you can, you will then have all these pattern steps to take with you and you can turn them into your own artwork. But is um, the step out is just the detailed breakdown of each individual 
Zentangle. And those are those are made by the people who um, design the original Zentangle. Um, so if you come up with your own Zentangle and you turn it into Zentangle patterns.com to be one of an official Zentangle, then you have to turn it in with a step out. So like my wheelie floor that I turned into them that I saw on a uh, wheel at a wheel store for wheels and tires. Um, I took a picture of that and then broke it down into individual steps and it should usually be about six individual steps that will get you to the end result. Now this one, this one's fun. This one is called Roller Coaster. No, this one's called Coaster. I'm sorry, not Roller Coaster. It's called Coaster. And so for it, you want to, um, you're going to make a wavy line that comes around and touches each one of your circles. And it doesn't have to be perfectly spaced for this one. You can just eyeball it. If my pen would work, this would be a much easier process. So right there, I got out of line a little bit. So you're just going to come back over here and just make your line. Just fix it a little bit. It's okay. And if you're doing this and you need to stop, it's better to stop in the middle of a curb than down here because they tend to get a little squared off if you stop down at the bottom of the curb and you don't want it to be squared. Like I just did this really good example for you. So, see it kind of made it kind of squared. Not that it will matter in the end. And I told you not to do that, and then that's exactly how I do it every time. So, now as you're coming back around here, you want to make sure that you match this up. So, make sure that you're meeting back up up here with a good amount of space okay so at the wide end of each of your loops you're going to make a half circle and color it in this would be a nice one to do um this would be a good one to do in color your little your little half circles could be in color This is a really easy border to do, and it turns out so cute. And these little half circles don't have to all be the same size, just kind of eyeball it. They need to kind of be centered. So you want to just make sure that you're rounded this part up here is kind of centered with that right there so you want to start your circle a little off center so that your middle circle this will be even with this and any of those mess ups you did around this edge can kind of be fixed now with these little circles. And when we go back in with our white pen, I don't have it that way in my drawing, um, but you could 
give on these a little a little dot to give those a little highlight. I feel like he was just too little for that spot. And as you can see, this paper, once you get all these drawings on there, wants to pop up. So you could put a clip down here, or a paper clip, or uh, whatever you want to put there to hold your paper down so you don't catch the corners on your sleeve like I'm doing. I'm just used to not doing that, and I just know to pick my hand up every time I move it around so I don't catch that corner and fold it over. Maybe we're going to get some sunshine after all today. Maybe it's going to stick around for a while. Okay, and we're all the way back around. So now, you're going to make the lines in this. And to do that, you're going to make two lines there. And then kind of keep them spaced like so and just do like this. So you're going to end up with six lines in there, give or take. And you do the two at the top, and then you want to make your next lines where these lines are. So come out like this. And here, <clears throat> excuse me, you could make another one. It doesn't have to match that one perfectly. It just kind of needs another one in there because I didn't space them very good. So now, you're just gonna do that all the way around. And if they don't match up, not a big deal. Mine, if on my original one, there's a lot of them that don't match up. Just because I found that right there, that one, if you try to match it up, it's it's got a weird angle to it. Now see, this one, you could match up with that one probably. And you're going to have an extra line in there. It's, a, it again, does it not have to be exact. you'll kind of find that as you do it, they kind of just naturally match up. And you will have that oddball weird one like that that doesn't really work out. This pen is just insisting that we have issues today. Need to give it a good clean that nib off all the way around. And to do that, you just move it all around on your paper and get it clean on all the edges.
these pins also come in a pack of two a one and a five black and a one and a five dark gray um, and a one and a five really light gray which is really fun to do you could do the really light gray back here and you could do a, a pattern like um, where you just go like this all over the background and it gives you a, a really cool pattern in the background with a light gray and it also comes in a pack of um, two black two light gray and two brown so they have a lot of choices for this one and all of them I think were like eleven ninety eight so good pins except it's not acting like it's a good pen today but that's because it's been asked to do things it probably wasn't actually designed to do um, all of my art supplies get a good workout I did take this over the top of my alcohol markers while they were still a little wet so I feel like since then my tip hasn't worked exactly the way it was supposed to work crazy pin. I do have another one, but I would have to get up and reach my arm across the video and dig through my pins and locate through all the black fine liners that I have. So we won't interrupt our video to do that. I will just make this little dude do his job like he's supposed to do. I think my next video is going to be um, on alcohol markers, which um, most of you know I just got a good set of those and I am loving them. So I thought I would do a video to play with those. Make sure all your little lines touch your top lines. So I'm having to press a little harder on this pen than I normally. I'm not sure what happened here. Um, that's how my brain works, folks. Okay, so that's how you make coaster. So now the fun part begins. We'll give that pen a break since he doesn't want to work today. So, um, you want a pencil that's got a really nice soft lead in it. And you want to very lightly, you want to make, when you do this, you want to barely touch and make very light. You don't want to go like this to do your shading because this amount of pencil to shade. You have a lot of shading off of that and you're never going to blend that out and make it look like it needs to be. But when it's really light, you can totally turn that into a shadow and get that pencil going. So be sure that you have a really light touch when you're shading. So we're going to shade and you don't want much. A little goes a long way. So we want to shade this, so we're going to make little thin lines on the edges here. And then, so when you're doing your shading, you can make all your pencil lines and then go back in and shade, or you can do each one at a time. So I just want to show you how. And then we're going to go back in and 
do them all together at one time. So, so as you can see, that pencil line is really light and you don't have to work your paper so hard. If you have a really dark one, you're going to really work your paper and you're, it'll start lifting the paper. And then you're going to have a hot mess going. Um, so you want a shadow line right here. And then you want a shadow line um, on the outside edge of these. As you can see, I'm just making it like the width of my lead. You do not need any more than that for a shadow unless you're making a really deep shadow. Okay, so you're going to shade all the way around. And you're going to do the same on this, the outside edge of this one. And the outside edge of this one. And that shadow is going to bring the middle of this right up out of there. You can almost see it doing it now. Now, everywhere you have your little dips here in this, kind of follow that with a little bit of pencil. You don't want very much here at all. That's all you're going to do. And we'll just go ahead and shade that one so you can see what we're going to do. You have a lot of pencil on this, so you could use that to shade these little areas when you're done here shading this. You could use just what's on your stump to shade those spots, and then you don't have a real... You just want to give a hint of a shadow there because it folds in, and so it needs to have a little bit of... And you want it to follow, so do it that way. Don't go this way and just keep it straight. You want to blend it out into that. And see, there's one right here, and I didn't put any pencil there. We're just going to use our, we're just going to give it a light shadow there. And you can just use your stub for that because it's got enough pencil on it from all this other shading. And as you can see, now this brings those edges down, and it makes this come up. And these folds in here all have texture. It gives it all kinds of texture now. So that's why we're going to shade like that. And don't do anything to this one and the coaster yet because it's got a different way to shade it. So. You want it, we're going to make it look like it's kind of bent at that middle curve. And you can, by all means, put your pencil lines in and shade each one of these one at a time. There's not a thing wrong with doing it that way. But if I'm being honest with you, this is, I love shading, but getting me all these pencil lines in is like my least favorite part. So I try to do it all to, all first and then you can go back in and do all the blending it out. And what I should have been doing while I was doing this, because now I'm going to have to go all the way back around, is to add this line in right here too. Now you have here, you have a line right here and a line right here. You don't want to go like this when you shade that. You want to shade each one of those individually to give you the right look for each piece. You want each one of these to have a direction to it. So now where did I leave off here? This one right here. 
if you just went like this, you would not get the 3D effect that you're looking for. So you want to make sure that you do your pencil, your shading, um, when you blend it out, you want to blend it to the piece that it belongs to. So now we're going to blend all that out. Um, we're going to blend that out just a little bit there so that looks like it's tucked underneath. And this is what I was talking about. If you just go at it, um, if you tried to blend, which I didn't put in there, if you tried to blend this line right here at the same time that you blended this, you're going to end up blending that whole thing right there and you won't get that highlight in there that you want. So, yes, it takes a little bit longer, but you want to do each one by its own self and bring it out the way it needs to go. So, do each individual piece on its own. And I'm not really pushing down hard on this either. You don't have to get in there and, and scrub it. You just want to blend it out nice and light. And always start at the back and then as you're blending out, you want to uh, relax your hand and not push as hard when you come out of a, the blend. So that will lighten it out. So if you were blending a circle, you would want to blend with the circle. So if you were blending this whole thing and you blended it this way, you're going to end up with a flat shadow on there. So you, you want to blend with the shape. And you can make little tiny, you can blend that out in little circles, like so, and it'll give you a nice blend. And this paper is so great for blending anyway. We already blended that one. And you want the you want the very edge where it touches something else to be the darker part because well that's how it would be naturally so not a lot of light gets down in there in those little grooves and that's what gives you your depth and if you like right there it's really light right there after I blend it out you can always go back in really lightly with your pencil and just add a little bit more in and give you that darker edge. This one's got a lot of little, and I'm just bringing that up and using what's left on my on my um, stump here. I just love how that looks. So now we're gonna do this, and you're gonna bring that pencil up this way. And what you're actually doing here is you're giving the white sparkle by bringing your shadow up. And I missed a line here.
Now, I don't know if you can see this um, on the video when I move it. You can see that on your on your black. So if you really want to get detailed and you don't want your pencil to be on your black, you can just do the whites. Um, I don't mind if it's on my black because when you're looking at it from the right angle, you're never going to see that on the black. And you could also go back in with your eraser and take it off the black. So you could do in each individual little one, but who has time for all that? I mean, really, I probably do have time for all that, but... So now your center is all nice and shaded. So for this, you're only going to shade, you only want to shade the outside edge so that it looks, um, it gives it kind of a folded look. So we're going to only do each outside little shape. And again, if you want to do it that way, you can do each one of these individually and just have it all done as you go around. For me, I like to do it this way. Now, see, I just got my pencil over there in that spot, and I don't want it there. So, just come back in here with your little eraser and pick that up. Because you don't want shadow on that other lip. You want it to not be nice and bright. If you're using a stump that, or tortilla, t tortillion, I can't ever say that word, so I just call them stumps because they are blending stumps. Um, if you're using one that you use all the time, then you definitely have enough pencil on your stump that you do not have to make these lines super dark. And even if you're doing a brand new one, you, after blending like one little section, you're going to have enough pencil on there to give you enough color. Okay, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So after shading all of this and everything we just did there, you still have enough pencil on here to use it to shade. You... So if you're needing a, a really light shadow, you can just use your stump and you don't even have to add pencil to it. So now you want to just blend it out a little bit. You don't, you still want this little bit of highlight on there, but you want that to look like it's got a fold to it. See, when I just did this, there was not pencil right there. But I had plenty on my stump, so I, I don't really have to go back in and add pencil to that area. It'll, it'll blend out. And be real careful when you get down to these little spots because you don't want to come out of your outside. But if you do, you can just clean that up with an eraser. It's not a big deal. Or you could take that mistake and use it and 
blend all the way around and then it would look like this is coming off the paper too. A little, there are six little tiny dots in this piece of paper right here that are in the paper. It's not colored. I'm not sure what the heck that is. Okay. And there you have it. Um, get you a, a pen or whatever pen you like to use and sign your name to it because you just made a piece of work. I hope you had a good time with this. I hope you learned a few things. Um, I hope you had a relaxing time. Uh, and I hope you take this piece and break it down and use all of these individual things in another drawing. So thanks for joining me and see you in the next video.